Welcome to the Los Angeles Italia show. We are uh, very happy. Tomorrow is uh, starting uh, the 17th annual Los Angeles Italia Film, Fashion and Art Festival uh, with an incredible uh, number of movies, uh, 150 movies to be seen uh, either at the Chinese theater from 2 p.m. local time in Hollywood or on the platforms eventive.org in the States and mymovies.it. Well, it's an incredible 150 movies are being selected to be shown and it's a record for uh, the real event worldwide, uh, the most popular Italian event worldwide uh, since 2006. And I'm very happy to have with me today to talk about it, one of the person who actually so this festival uh, um, starting because uh, that time he was uh, working on his movie and he won an Oscar uh, immediately after and he became a part of the family after immediately that night when we met at the Vanity Fair party. Welcome to the Los Angeles Italia show. We are uh, very happy. Tomorrow is uh, starting uh, the 17th annual Los Angeles Italia Film, Fashion and Art Festival uh, with an incredible uh, number of movies, uh, 150 movies to be seen uh, either at the Chinese theater from 2 p.m. local time in Hollywood or on the platforms eventive.org in the States and mymovies.it. Well, it's an incredible 150 movies are being selected to be shown and it's a record for uh, the real event worldwide, uh, the most popular Italian event worldwide uh, since 2006. And I'm very happy to have with me today to talk about it, one of the person who actually so this festival uh, um, starting because uh, that time he was uh, working on his movie and he won an Oscar uh, immediately after and he became a part of the family after immediately that night when we met at the Vanity Fair party. I'm very happy to have back with me Maestro Paul Haggis. So welcome back to Los Angeles, Italia, Paul. Uh, thank you. It's been, it's been a, a long, long journey since then for you, and an incredible one. 150 movies this year, Pascal. That's that's incredible. Congratulations. It's, it's, uh, what you've been achieving is, is remarkable. Congratulations. Yes, it's a, an incredible job done by a commission that is chaired by Gianluca Castagna, and of course, Antonella Cocco is the, direct, the artistic director who manages all this uh, uh, screenings uh, between uh, wow. the Chinese theater and the platforms and uh, let me tell you something it's very it's very cool that uh, we can show a lot of the Italian uh, movies uh, yes. uh, also um, created by uh, young filmmakers because today uh, having uh, uh, the possibility to work with digital there, it, there is not any more uh, barrier in order to start your career. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing that's always been such a tragedy with the uh, sort of the best foreign language film uh, category is that, you know, the, every country has to choose one filmmaker and one film and then all those compete. And there are so many great films in every country, especially in Italy, the, the younger filmmakers, but even the, you know, the more experienced filmmakers, you know, you know Sergio Rubini did a beautiful film last year that I didn't get to see until I, I was at your festival. And 
uh, and, and there are so many younger filmmakers like that. Uh, and so it's wonderful that you're able to, I keep using the word wonderful, but it is true. Uh, it's great for us to be able to see these movies that we wouldn't get a chance to see otherwise. It's, it's a great gift. Yes, absolutely. The De Filippo Brothers, uh, uh, yes. uh, directed by Sergio Rubini, is a part of the festival, the Los Angeles Italia Festival, the exclusive American premiere of this movie. Ah, highly recommended. It is such a beautiful film. Uh, and as soon as you, uh, you, you, you introduced me to Sergio and his producers, you know, to Agostino and that, I really wanted to see the movie. And when I did, when it had subtitles, I was so moved by this true story, uh, and it's so beautifully shot, so beautifully told. Agostino, yes, so the producer, Agostino Sacca, who's actually, yes. you are talking to make something good. Yes. Well, like, cross yeah, the fingers. Yes. <laughs> cross the fingers. So, um, Paul, uh, yeah, talking back about the 150 screenings, I suggest Maybe. everybody who's interested and from now I suggest also to my people, Alberto, to put um, a few times, sometimes the, 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 the title of the website, because yes. check the yes. program on losangelesitalia.com. You can uh, definitely yeah. can see where you can uh, watch the movies uh, on this. And you're not going to see these movies anyplace else, because many of them don't get distribution, many great films from around the world, but especially in Italy, don't get the distribution they deserve in America, and we don't get to see them. I mean, uh, the Filippo Brothers doesn't have distribution. It's a crime. Uh, it's, it's an incredible movie, a beautifully shot, beautifully realized, beautifully written and directed and acted, and no one gets to see it except for on, on your platform right now, so I no, highly no, it recommend will be on, it. It will be live at the Chinese theater, and I hope that after oh, the screening, we'll get... Run to uh, a, a distributor actually i'm gonna work for making I, it happen and i hope so we all it's should uh, recommend film. to the american distributor to look for this movie and also yes. i mean another amazing movie is the one by uh, uh, mario martone the king laughter i love uh, mario starring uh, starring your friend tony servillo who's actually yes. also oh. starring in the paolo sorrentino movie the end of god now, that is the, the, the law in Italy that, that, that Tony has to be in every Italian movie because he's so fucking good. Yes. <laughs> now, I, wanna, I was asking you with a joke, is the end of God helping Paolo Sorrentino to, to get close to the Oscar? We hope so. He's, Paolo is one of my favorite filmmakers of all time. He, he, he is such a genius. So, you know, we will keep, we'll keep our fingers crossed this week. So, considering you are uh, uh, a great expert of cinema international, what makes for you Paolo Sorrentino uh, a real maestro? You know, I think it's his ability to, uh, to capture something very personal uh, and yet uh, universal. And, and you see that over and over. His stories are, are so specifically his. And yet, by doing that, by being so specifically uh, his, it somehow becomes universal and becomes emotional. Um, and they're all different, but they, they, they're, they're all that. And, and that's what always impresses me with his movies. And that's what I look for in a great film, something that is unique, is personal, and that speaks to us all. Great. So the big competition this year, I mean, uh, when, as far as we... They open the academy to the uh, international audience, uh, to the international uh, uh, artists. Uh, yes. We get to see even um, better and better movies. Big competition, yes. uh, no? Yes. For, yes. For Sorrentino. And that's, and that's a wonderful thing. That's a wonderful thing, I think, because too long it's been, uh, it's almost xenophobic, uh, the the, uh, the American uh, cinema, and now. You've seen it opening in the last few years in, in wonderful ways, and, uh, and it's great to see. It's about time. Paul, however, it seems that uh, the only movie to get a lot of uh, results at the box office are the superheroes, and there is also some complaint by uh, maestros uh, such as uh, Martin Scorsese, not only, that uh, the studios are just uh, paying attention to 
um, finance a movie who makes uh, a lot of money uh, despite uh, to the smaller and uh, yeah. more constructive movies yeah it is a real problem it's a cyclical problem i mean when martin scorsese was first making his films it was the exact same problem uh and uh, it, only the, the big budget movies were getting the theaters and then he came along his entire generation of young filmmakers and changed all that and, and then those pictures became big box office but you know you look at his early films they they were just so different they were and they uh, and they threatened the status quo and yet somehow the studios figured out oh these make money and then they did they, i think cinema we have to keep shaking it up like he did originally uh, like and in, in, in that period and, and others have done since Hollywood hates to be shaken up, but boy, whenever it is, it really benefits from it. I see. So what is your favorite movie this year uh, for the Oscar? I can't say because I'm a voting member of the Academy, so I cannot okay, so tell you. So what is uh, the movies that you, I mean, I, do you, okay, let's put it another way. No, not going to do it. Not there not is do any it. movie that was not uh, uh, chosen to be considered among the five uh, that you would have loved to watch nominated? You know, I, I can't think of one off the top of my head. I'm sure there is. There, there is. Uh, I, I can't think of one, Pascal. Can you? Okay, I make you the question in another way. Why a Bond movie cannot ah. ever be nominated for an Oscar? Okay. I mean, it's why comedies, action and comedies are a very hard time. Uh, getting nominated and uh, some of our best movies over the years have been comedies uh, You look at some of my favorite films of all time uh, Are the screwball comedies of you know, Cary Grant and Rosalind Russell and Catherine Hepburn and none of those got nominated uh, It is so comedies action movies have a very hard time people don't think they're serious and you have to go back to Preston Sturges and uh, and Sullivan's Travels, but a you know they uh, a filmmaker who decides to make a serious film and go on the road and learn how to be a serious filmmaker, only to realize that the silly comedies that he make are the ones that are the most important. And so it is. It's the same thing with action movies. I think there there is always there's always been this uh, uh, this preference in Hollywood for for dramas, and that's what happens. The serious dramas. Uh, I disagree with that. But decides to make a serious. Oh, Paul, um, you've been spending a, a lot uh, of time in uh, Italy recently, no? Yeah. Yes. I heard that you also shot a little movie in Puglia. I did. A and you're going to be organizing a, a festival with uh, ah. our friend Sol in Puglia. I, I'm helping uh, uh, Salco Stolastalton and uh, my, my friend Silvia Bizio with their festival there in Puglia, which, of course, you are, are uh, a great inspiration and great friend in doing so. So hopefully we can be sister uh, organizations, sister festivals with you because you inspire us to do, do something. When, it, when they asked me to, to help consult on this, I said, well, you know, there's one festival that I, I love and there's only one. And, uh, and there are many great festivals in the world, but the only one I try to go to every year is the ESPN Global, because uh, Pascal's done something. And I'm not saying it because you're here, I'm going to smoke up your ass, but you were able to do something that made it so intimate and yet uh, so beautiful. You were able to invite people or people that I would love to meet and have a conversation with and, and give us the time to sit around and talk and and. Uh, it, it was such. It's been such a gift over the years. So I said, "Well, if, if we could do something like that, if we could aspire to something like that, then then we'd be doing something great." But because the, you you've been able to do something, uh, and with with almost with without the support you needed, and with um, uh, and you just keep going, and COVID almost killed you, and you kept going, <laughs> and and you know, the it, it it's just it's remarkable, and you keep doing it every year, and you keep creating something that is very personal it's, it's like with paulo's thing it's a very personal festival and yet it is very it's universal it's exactly as i just described sorrentino's movies you are the, the equivalent your festival is the equivalent of a sorrentino movie yes so paul um but what is going to be like this festival in puya tell us more oh i don't know we'll see it's very small very small very intimate we'll see the last week of june 
Uh, we haven't announced it, uh, Alora Fest. Uh, where we're just, it's just, you know, it's, it's socially, mostly socially relevant, uh, films that are socially relevant and, and we're honoring um, people who do great work. We're having actors and others come not to be honored themselves, uh, but to honor others who are doing real work in peace and justice. Because so, there are so many heroes being created right now, people stepping up, doing amazing things in the Ukraine and, and elsewhere. People are rescuing refugees at sea and helping with the environment. And so we're, we're asking, uh, you know, actors to come and help honor those people. Uh, so uh, that's the message. And then, you know, uh, Sylvia is finding us some wonderful films. Uh, and it's a very small, it's five days, but uh, uh, hopefully we'll get some good people and we'll, we'll hopefully be able to get inspired by you, relax, have people can relax and enjoy themselves and, uh, and come back. And that was your whole thing is that you never had to do publicity because <laughs> People would go back to Hollywood and say, oh my God, have you heard of the Is Ischia Film Festival? And they go, no, what is that? Ischia Global, what the hell is that? <laughs> oh, you have to go, it's the most amazing thing. It's like when I first heard, when I first heard about it, they remember go back and someone told me, if you ever get invited to the Ischia Global Film Festival, just say yes. And I went, Ischia, what the hell is that? And then you met me on the red carpet and said, would you like to come to the Ischia Global Film Festival? And I said, yes. And I'd been <laughs> sort of the best had. I've just had 15 years. I, I, I've tried never to miss it. Thank you so much, really. So, uh, Paul, we are celebrating Los Angeles Italia Festival. The yeah, event which is another great one. When I lived in Los Angeles. I met great friends there. I, I, again, the same thing. I go to your festival and I'd meet so many interesting people. Uh, it was and, and see such terrific films. That's what I, I love about your what you put together. You put together really interesting people. You're able to curate interesting people that, that, that you want to talk to and exchange ideas with and people you admire in a very intimate setting and then see great films. It's remarkable. Thank you so much. But uh, what does uh, uh, make sense for you, uh, the, the idea of creating a bridge in between Italy and America, cinematography side? Well, I mean, uh, Italian and French cinema is what, I, I, what inspired me. Uh, to, to make movies. Uh, and the, the, that's, I mean, from the neorealists and through, through, through the, 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 the great films, the 60s and 70s and, um, and then on. Uh, so you keep, Italy keeps making these, every, every generation or so you come back with remarkable filmmakers and they, you, are, you, you are taking the best of Hollywood, that as France does it as well, but I, I happen to think Italy doesn't matter. Uh, you're, you're taking the, the, the best lessons from Hollywood and then making incredibly personal films with it. And you see Italian filmmakers do that. So that exchange, I think, is something that really we really benefit from in America. Uh, you're seeing a, you know, great entertainment with just a little bit different point of view, and, and the Italians do it really well. So, Paul, now, maybe, I don't know if I ever introduced you, but you definitely know her as a great actress. She's wonderful, Italian, <coughs> I don't the Italian America. She's a real Italian from Basilicata, and uh, she ah. moved uh, to uh, Hollywood in order to become an a, a international star. And Sofia Milos made it because of her skill, uh, her uh, capability, her, uh, I mean, tenacia, come si dice tenacia, grinta. I know, dice? Sophia, hello, is, how are you? Is, uh, hi, Paul, I know I'm like how on my you? walk, but you know, Pascal is always going to convince us to come on. <laughs> uh, but si, dice, si dice persistence. You've been, I, I thought it was a bad word, persistence. So you look very Los Angelina. Uh, wh wh where are you now? I'm in Beverly Hills, taking a power walk. I took a break. Great. So are you getting in good shape for tomorrow night? Are you tomorrow, uh, you're going to be okay. the, for the first time in your life, the president of the festival. I thought it was a good uh, recognition after you've been with us 16 years. Um, since 2006 when we started and now you are becoming for the first time uh, a top executive of uh, the event. I am, I, when, uh, when we thought uh, about somebody that could uh, um, step on stage with great personality, we definitely, so this is the time 
that Sofia is to show up. Uh, Sofia is wonderful. I'm yeah, honored. Perfect. Thank you very much. Yes, it's been a great, it's been wonderful. And we missed you last year. We're going to miss you again this year, but I know you're going to join us with a video. Um, I, um, I was listening in before 150 movies this year. How fantastic. Uh, for me, it's always an incredible joy because I get to see movies I otherwise don't get to see. Um, get to get you know, it's a way of a beautiful way of introducing that you've that you've done so beautifully, um, uh, to introducing Italian cinema here and bring it back the way it really deserves to be. And sometimes because of the budgets, because of like Paul said, distribution, it doesn't get here. And we we love to see it. I love to have it. It brings it it brings our heart, it, our Italian heart, to Hollywood. I see there is very windy outside in Los Angeles now in Beverly Hills, eh? <laughs> Yes, it's a little chilly. <laughs> so, but uh, it's a good... Nice and warm in New York, Sophia. Come to New York. It's nice and warm. <laughs> oh, is it really? <laughs> yeah, it's lovely. I used to outside like this in my t-shirt. Yeah. So I will I be in New York shooting May. In May, I will be shooting oh, in New York. Oh, what are you shooting? What are you shooting? I'm recurring on this show called Gravesend with a lot of Sopranos co-stars that I had. Armando Sante, Mario Cantone from Sex in the City, Andrew Dice Clay, Fran Drescher, Chaz Palmitieri, his daughter plays my daughter. So it's, uh, it's fun. It's a, good, a beautiful group. I already started doing three, four episodes and going back for more. The first week of uh, May, I'll be there. So guys, I want to ask you now a very, very serious issue. So of course, uh, we are uh, uh, people uh, working in show business and we are uh, here to speak about Los Angeles, Italia, which starts tomorrow and ends the night before the Oscar. But of course, we cannot ignore that there is a, a terrible war in Europe. So how is uh, the feeling in your, your um, Paul is in New York, Sophia now, now is in uh, Los Angeles. So how is uh, your feeling, uh, I, I, I can imagine broken, but uh, what is the situation like? How does the American people uh, understand uh, how difficult is this moment for Europe, uh, and for, it, especially for Ukraine? It's not comprehensible. It's tragic to witness what's happening there every day. I never thought it would actually go this far and to see war crimes and see women and children, children being babies being separated from their mothers, it's, uh, it's appalling. Um, it's unimaginable to see these people who have lost their loved ones, uh, their homes, their lives that they knew, uh, going in, living in uncertainty and fear. Um, my, my heart really goes out to them. I, I find I want this to stop immediately. Paul. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty incomprehensible. Sophia said it right. It is, uh, I wake up every morning and that's what I do. I look at the news, I listen to what's going on. It is, uh, when I was in, uh, even though I was shooting our little film in Italy, when we did a little rap party, you know, which we just sat around and, and we toasted the people of, of the Ukraine who, and the children uh, who were uh, going to bed that night, um, terrified and listening to bombs fall. Um, it is, uh, I, I've been in situations never as bad as that. I've been in some bad ones and, and been around people who have been. And uh, it's the kids. It's the kids. I, 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 uh, I, 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 it's, hard, it's hard to explain what, what's happening. You see it. You understand on some level that it's, it's this geopolitical game that's being played by monsters. But uh, we don't care don't care about the suffering of others. Uh, it's, it, it is, at the same time, we have to be very careful because uh, as this, this is heinous and horrible, but it is, it is not the first time a country has invaded another country without no reason at all. We did it in Iraq. So we, it's very hard for us. I wish, I wish America had cleaner hands and so we could point to these people and say, this is heinous and we would never do the same. We did the same just not 20 years ago under ridiculous circumstances. Now, that doesn't mean this isn't awful. This is, this is terrible. I, and, and, it's, and I'm not trying to compare the two. I'm just saying I, I, there, war it should always be the last result uh, of, of, of the last resort, rather. And it's not, apparently. Apparently, these days, it's the, the first resort um, of bullies 
and, and people like Putin who are, uh, you know, who we've known for years is just, a, 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 is, is just a, a bully and a monster and we just coddle him and I don't know why. And the but fact uh, that he will... Yeah. Sophia, when we watch television in this moment, uh, we remember a few James Bond uh, movies uh, of the past uh, uh, that we could never uh, imagine that would be uh, as much as uh, uh, crazy as it is now. I don't understand the question. The, the question is, uh, uh, reality goes over uh, the fantasy. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Isn't uh, uh, well, both are based to, to, on each other, right? Life imitates art, art imitates life. Uh, which one comes first? Exactly. So we, it's something tragic that we just watched on the movies and we never expect it to happen. Yeah, you, you wish Bond villains could stay in the movies and not be actual people like Putin. Yeah, that's, yeah. It was crazy. You know, I saw, we saw so many... Imagine, like, uh, you know, and uh, of course, the Cold War will never stop it, although they show up with this uh, face, mild thing, spinning face. I am very, very curious to understand what will be the end of this war. At the end, they will sit, sit down and uh, with a thousand, thousand people death and uh, yes. no, with no, for, with, for no reason, for no reason. Yeah. Not just the dead, Pascal, the wounded, the mentally scarred, the, the terrified, the, the whole entire generation of children who are, who are growing up right there and are suffering this terrible shock. I mean, seeing their parents die, seeing their, I mean, it's just unthinkable, the psychological damage, and they just don't care. I mean, you see, you see what they bombed the other day, they bombed the, the, the house. I mean, the, oh, the I, theater. The, the theater, yeah, where they knew people were, were hiding. We're, we're trying to stay away and they bombed it. Yeah, and for the ones that care in Russia, they're being silenced and threatened to be imprisoned for 10 or 15 years, like uh, this uh, lady on the news did. It's just appalling that people can't even speak up. This is 2022. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's go back like to the... Said. Let's Sorry, go, go back to the best after, part of our... Russian. Sorry, Sorry, Paul. So what you were saying, Paul? No, I just said it's very important what Sophia said and what Bernie Sanders has said. We have to make sure that we keep a difference between the Russian government uh, and the Russian people. They're, they're very, very brave Russian people right now who are risking everything to demonstrate against this, risking I mean, imprisonment which is just to speak out and or to hold up a sign on a news show. Those are, or the, the biologists who spoke up. There are very, very brave Russians out there speaking up. The Russian people are not the same as the Russian government. It's very important to remember that. Okay, so let's go back to the cinema and let's remember that uh, uh, tomorrow is a beautiful day for Italy in Los Angeles because uh, we opened the 17th annual Los Angeles Italia Film Fashion and Art Festival chaired this year by the Italian-American actor Robert Davi and uh, the wonderful uh, Lucana actress uh, uh, Sofia Milos, who uh, actually became uh, very Los Angelina. You can uh, recognize how, <laughs> how cool she is uh, in Beverly Hills so far. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, so, so I, I hope that you're gonna, I'm sure you're gonna make a great job maybe tomorrow in the morning, uh, Sofia, we talk again, we see, we talk more, uh, we go more on details what's gonna happen um, in uh, at the Chinese theater. Uh, and um, Paul, uh, I will, uh, I will uh, ask you uh, to join us more during this week when Please. we know more I results. I want to just you to say something about your friend and your actor, Ricardo Scamarcio, who's actually is gonna be honored tomorrow night uh, uh, in Los Angeles, as well as uh, Benedetta Porcaroli, with an award presented by Intesa San Paolo, one of our special partners. I would, I would love to be there to honor Ricardo in person, because what people, people know him as a good actor and as a, as a beautiful man, and you know, and, and, and doing great work in drama. They don't know what a great comedian he is as well, and I was able to work with him 
doing a doing a comedic role, and I just we just had the best time. He was so funny, and so uh, people do not know him like that, and they should. He he is such a, a such a multi talented uh, individual. So I I, I wish you I could used be him there. in the movie Third Person as a, a barman yes. tender. Yes, who thought he was joking? Yes, exactly. Yes, <laughs> I remember. I came uh, at the statue to you shoot did. backstage and he was dressing as a bartender with the Roma yeah. soccer team yeah. Yeah. He, he had bar Americano and he hated all Americans. Exactly, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Okay, so... Um, uh, anyway, so please, please give him my love. He's a wonderful actor and deserves this. Sophia uh, will give you, you him your love. And Sophia, oh. so we start tomorrow at two o'clock at the Chinese at Los Angeles time, a Chinese theater with uh, the special screening of Il Sorpasso by uh, Dino Risi starring uh, the legendary iconic uh, Mattatore Vittorio Gasman and then uh, the premiere of a movie uh, shot between Italy and America, Dakota, produced by our friend Andrea Iervolino and then of course uh, we have uh, the our opening ceremony and to follow Riccardo Scamarcio movie which is uh, I think uh, very very beautiful produced by Red Cinema so you can double check the all the time the program on losangelesitalia.com and follow us on the social media on YouTube Facebook uh, Instagram and whatever so thank you so much to the thank Oscar you. winner screenwriter and producer and wonderful friend Paul Agis and to the gorgeous and talented and uh, my dear uh, sorella Sofia Milus. Ciao, ciao a tutti, ci vediamo domani. Bye Paul.